Good, Yantiv. Shana Tova. We're going to start because I don't want to be held responsible at 6.30 tonight when you're hungry and want to eat. And you're not out for 30 more minutes. Welcome to Temple Emanuel here at the beautiful Heritage Theater in Campbell, California. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. So beautiful with our new Bima furniture. So nice to be with you all, our members and those that are joining us for the first time. We also welcome those that are on the internet and welcome you into our family as well. We begin our worship with an opportunity on pages 135 to 137 to pick a reading to kind of focus yourself. One of the things I really like if you look at 136 is the fast we choose. I think it's a very important reading. And if you're unable to fast, I would really recommend that you read page 137. That may be a, a helpful reading. So let's go ahead and, and read something to ourselves as we focus ourselves on this Yom Kippur morning. Please join us on page 138, singing Matovu.
please join us on page 141. I bless the night that nourished my heart to set the ghosts of longing free into the flow and figure of dream that went to harvest from the dark, bread for the hunger no one sees. All that is eternal in me welcomes the wonder of this day, the field of brightness it creates, offering time for each thing to arise and illuminate. I place on the altar of dawn the quiet loyalty of breath, the tent of thought where I shelter, waves of desire I am sure to, and all beauty drawn to the eye. May my mind come alive today to the invisible geography that invites me to new frontiers, to break the dead shell of yesterdays, to risk being disturbed and changed. May I have the courage today to live the life that I would love, to postpone my dream no longer, but do at last what I came here for, and waste my heart on fear no more. Page 156. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher yatsar et adam bechokhma, uvravo nekavim, nekavim chalulim chalulim, kalu eviyadu alifnei chisei chivodecha, sheim yipateach echad mehem, o yisatem echad mehem, yifshar litkayem velaamo lefanecha. Page 157. I can look at my body as an old friend, who needs my help, or an enemy who frustrates me in every way with its fra frailty and inability to cope. Old friend, I shall try to be of comfort to you to the end. Baruch atah Adonai rofechul basar, mapli la'asot. Blessed are you, God, who performs the miracles of creation and healing. Responsibly in the Hebrew on pages 116 following. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lasech vivina Lehavchin ben yom uvein laila Amen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Pokeach ivriim Amen. 
זו כיף כפופים. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, רוקה הארץ על המים. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשה לי קור צורקי. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, המכין מצדק עבר. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, מלביש ערומים. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, הנותן ליעף כוח. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, המעביר שיניים מהגני, ותנומה מאף אפיי. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשני בצלם אלוהים. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשני בן חורים. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשני ישראל. אמן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, עוזי ישראל בגבורה. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, עוטר ישראל בתפארה. אמן. We continue on page 170. Page 172, we join together in the middle of the page. 
From Egypt you redeemed us, Adonai, our God, and from a world of slavery you saved us, in times of hunger you fed us, in times of plenty you nourished us, you turned our blight to blessing, spared us from suffering, and rescued us from the sword. Your mercy supports us, and your love abides, now as in the past. Never forsake us, Adonai, our God, never turn away. Holy One, infinite your power, radiant your glory, unbounded your might, awe-inspiring your works. Al kiseram venisa, shochenar marom vekadoshemo, vechatu vranenu tarikim baronai laisharim nava tehila. Page one hundred and seventy-six. It kadal vei. On page 178, please rise if you are able. Yotzer or uvore chosha, ose shalom uvore et hakol. Or olam beotzer hayim, orot meofel amar vechayi. Hameir laaretz veladarim alecha, brahamim. Utuvo mechadesh bechol yom tamid. Maasev reshi. Ma rabu maasecha adonai. Kulam bechokma asita. Mala ha aretz kinyonecha. Chitbara Adonai Elohenu al shava maasita yadecha ve al meore or sita yafa arucha sela or chadash al siyon ta'ir ve niske hulanu mehera le oro. Baruch ata Adonai 
Yotzer Hameorot. Page 181. Like an unbroken current, energy streams from the source, bathing the planet in light, calling forth life, movement, mind unfolding from matter, the power to love. And we offer back to you our own creative energy, ever dreaming, building, shaping patterns out of chaos, searching out light in the darkness. Creation never ceases, not for an instant. All life is aglow with your light. All things draw sustenance from the source. Page 183. You love us by helping us grow. You give us Torah, a ladder for the soul, words that draw us upward. Every mitzvah, an invitation to climb, forge and kiln and crucible to purify our hearts. You give us Torah. You love us by helping us grow. page 186, 187, as we take a deep breath in and exhale out. Now breathe in that sense of hope and exhale out the Mishagas we need to let go of.
Please be seated as we continue with Vehaft on page 188. You shall love Adonai, your God, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Set these words which I command you this day upon your heart. Teach them faithfully to your children. Speak of them in your home and on your way. When you lie down and when you rise up, bind them as a sign upon your hand. Let them be a symbol before your eyes. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Be mindful of all my mitzvot and do them. Thus you will become holy to your God. I, Adonai, am your God, who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I, Adonai, your God. Please read responsively with me on page 193. Emet v'yatsav, true and enduring, all else is fluid, impermanent, fleeting. Unsteady we falter, in chaos we cry, in quest for some certainty, in anchor for trust. Sur chayenu magain yishenu, rock of our lives, our shield and protector, you are the constant abiding through time. The rock who works speaks boldness and justice, you the still center, fixed point where we stand. From the ends of the earth, from the depths of despair, we call with the psalmist to our fortress and refuge. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Our rock and salvation, our shelter and strength. Grounded in you, we shall never be shaken. The towers of cities will crumble with age, and iron corrodes and decays into rust. But the words and teachings that echo from Sinai are true and enduring. Forever they stand. Page 194. From Egypt you redeemed us, Adonai our God, and from the slave house you set us free. For this the people who felt your love exalted you, and the ones you found precious sang hymns of praise, blessing, and thanks to the living God who reigns forever, high and exalted, inspiring wonder, who humbles the proud and raises the lowly, who frees the captive, redeems the oppressed, and sustains the poor. God responds to the cry of our people, their prayer in time of need. Sing praises to God most high, most blessed source of blessing, as Moses, Miriam, and all Israel sang this joyous song to you. Page 196, Micha Mocha.
page 198, please rise if you are able. In the depths of night, by the edge of the river, Jacob was left alone. In heartfelt longing, in the temple of God, Hana uttered her prayer alone. In the barren wilderness, in doubt and despair, Elijah found God alone. On the holiest day, in the Holy of Holies, the high priest entered alone. We are bound to one another in myriad ways, but each soul needs time to itself. In solitude, we meet the solitary one, Silence makes space for the still, small voice. For the psalmist says, deep calls us to deep. From the depths of our soul, we seek what is most profound. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufiya ki tehilatecha. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe avoteinu, ve'imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, ve'elohe Yaakov. So make no fear of it. 
החיות הכל ברוך אתה אדוני ברוך הוא וברוך Page 209. Today we call it by its rightful name, a day of dread, Nora Ve'ayom, unwelcome visitor, for we want to live in a sunny world where God is love and all endings are happy. But the drumbeat sounds and the words tumble down, and even the angels tremble with fear, for all things are judged and all things will pass, and life ends in a heartbeat. And death knows our name. At the start of the year, in the season of truth, comes the day of remembrance. For all we forget, for all we deny, and we fall on our knees in the depths of our hearts, for we know that the bell tolls for us. The words are old and the language was theirs, but the call is real and the message is ours. Take hold of your life while you still have the chance, for your story will end and it might be this year, in a way you don't know. Take hold of your life, make things right while you can, and don't miss the call of the day of dread. On Rosh Hashanah, this is written. On the fast of Yom Kippur, this is sealed. How many will pass away from this world? How many will be born into it? Who will live and who will die? Who will reach the ripeness of age? Who will be taken before their time? Who by fire and who by water? Who by war and who by beast? Who by famine and who by drought? Who by earthquake and who by plague? Who by strangling and who by stoning? Who will rest and who will wander? Who will be tranquil and who will be troubled? Who will be calm and who tormented? Who will live in poverty and who in prosperity? Who will be humbled and who exalted?
continue together on page 214. But through return to the right path, through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree. You are everything that we praise you for. Slow to anger, quick to forgive. I can't hear you. You do not wish the death of sinners, but urge them to return from their ways and live. Until the day of death, you wait for them. You accept them at once if they return. Since you created us, you know our impulses. We are but flesh and blood. We continue on page 216 together. We who are mortal, our origin is dust, and so is our end. We wear out our lives to get our bread. Like broken vessels, like withered grass, like a flower that must fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, mere dust on the wind, a dream that flies away. But for you, ever-living sovereign, time has no limits. Your presence, unbounded by days and years, is everywhere, a glorious mystery none can decipher. Your name is worthy of you, and you are worthy of your name, and our name you have linked with yours. Please rise as we turn to page 218. Please be seated. 
We continue on page 222. And so, in your holiness, give all creation the gift of awe. <laughs> Turn our fear to, for, to reverence. Let us be witnesses of wonder, perceiving all nature as a prayer come alive. We bow to the sovereignty of your strength, the primacy of your power. We yearn for connection with all that lives, doing your will with whole, wholeness of heart, awe-inspiring is your creation, all-encompassing your transcendent name. Page 225, please. This is on page 224. And so, in your holiness, give your people the gift of honor. Bless with praise those who praise you. Give your believers a basis for faith, true happiness for land of Israel, true joy in Jerusalem. May the sparks of David, your servant, soon grow bright enough for us to see a beam of light in the darkness a promise of perfection. Please turn to page 226. And so, in your holiness, give the righteous the gift of a vision bright with joy. A world where evil has no voice and the role of malevolence fades like wisps of smoke. Good people everywhere will celebrate the stunning sight of arrogance gone from the earth. Page 228. You and you alone, Adonai, will reign over creation upon Mount Zion, home of your presence, and in Jerusalem, a city set apart by you. As the psalmist believed, the eternal shall reign for all time, your God for all generations, Zion, hallelujah. You are holy, your name is Ah. There's nothing divine beyond you. As the prophet Isaiah taught, the source of all might is exalted through justice. The God of holiness made holy through righteousness. Baruch atah Adonai ha-melech ha-kadosh, Bless are you, Adonai, Holy Sovereign. Page 232. We join together in the middle of that page. Our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness, together with the memory of our ancestors, the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family of Israel, may we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and for peace on this day of atonement. Zohrein Adonai Eloheinu Boletova. Amen. Eternal our God, remember us. Amen. Ufokdenu voli vracha. Amen. Be mindful of us. Amen. Behoshienu voli v'lechayim. And redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Amen. Favor us with words of deliverance and mercy. Show us the depth of your care. God, we await your redemption, for you reign with grace and compassion. We continue on page 238.
Please turn to page 239. A blue candle is my Zion, its pure light. Blesses the silence of this sleeping house. I do not wish to leave. Soon enough, something will take my hand and quietly lead me away. <coughs> Please turn to page 240. God who is ours, God of all generations, to you we are grateful forever. Rock and protector of our lives, your saving power endures from age to age. We thank you and tell the tale of your praise, your power in our lives, your caring for our souls, the constant miracle of your kindness. Morning, noon, and night, we call you goodness, for your compassion never ends. We call you mercy, for your love has no limit. We call you hope, now and for all time. We go to page 242. And for all these gifts, God of majesty, may your name come to be blessed and praised our gratitude, a daily offering until the end of time. Inscribe your covenant partners for a life of goodness. And may all life resound with gratitude and faith. In praise of your name, God, you free us and strengthen us. Blessed are you, Adonai, whose goodness deserves thanks and praise. Continue on page 246. silent reflection, I invite you to maybe pick a reading on pages 247, 248, 249, on through really 251 if you wish to, or to offer the prayer that you find in your heart at this moment. Continue on page 252. Please rise if you're able.
We join together in the English, Avinu Malkenu, Almighty and Merciful, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and our families. Avinu Malkenu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkenu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and terror. Avinu Malkenu, enter our names in the book of lives well lived. Avinu Malkenu, renew for us a year of goodness. Avinu Malkenu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu Malkenu, let our eyes behold the dawn of redemption. Avinu Malkenu, we pray, do not turn us away from you with nothing. Avinu Malkenu, welcome our prayer with love, accept and embrace it. Avinu Malkenu, act toward us as befits your name. Avinu Malkenu, act for your sake, if not for ours. Avinu Malkenu, you alone are our sovereign. Avinu Malkenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice, treat us with tender compassion. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. Let the reading of Torah be like prayer, a meditation to remind us what we strive for, a chant that binds us to the chain of generations. Let the reading of Torah be like prayer, a moment of purest solidarity with our people's hopes and history, an invitation to affirm or dissent, to challenge or believe, to ask why or say amen. Let the reading of Torah be like prayer, flowing like waters that renew the spirit, refreshing and sweet to nourish the soul. Let the reading of Torah be like prayer, every word a blessing, every verse a conversation with God.
Please be seated if you're able. <laughs> I'm so funny. I'm so funny. The Torah reading is on page 266 if you'd like to follow along. For the first Aliyah, we welcome Robin Feynman Marino reading from the Torah and Bob Teeter for the blessing before and after. For the second Aliyah, we welcome Karen White reading from the Torah and Laura Danoff with the blessings before and after. Baru 
Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vichaye Olam Nota Betocheinu Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen For the third Aliyah, we welcome Emma Josephs, reading from the Torah, and Sila Josephs for the blessings before and after. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Asher Bachar Banu Miko Haamim Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Adonai No Tain HaTorah Yavo u alecha ko hafari Ha'ele ha'barcha v'hakola Asher natati lefanecha V'hashibota elevalecha Lechum ha'barim asher Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Behaye Olam Nata Betocheinu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah For the fourth Aliyah we welcome Rachel Weinberg reading from the Torah and Dan Lee with the blessings before and after. Asher Borcha Bonu Miko Hoamim, Banotan Lanu et Torato, Boruchato Aronoi, Notain Hato Ro. Amen. Amen. The heavy Acha Aronai Elohecha El Haabret Asher Yarshu Avotecha. Be reached off the hate of the here beha me avoteha umal adonai eloheha et levacha the et levab zareha the achava et adonai eloheha the cholevacha u the hon of sheha. The man hayecha, the natan Adonai Elohecha, et kol haalot ha ele al oivecha ve al sonecha asher edafucha ve ata atashu ve shamata be kol Adonai ve asita et komit voltav asher. Anochim et zavecha, 
For the fifth Aliyah, we welcome Samantha Wiesner reading from the Torah and David and Sherry Wiesner with the blessings before and after. Baruch et Haronai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed, Baruch Adonai Le'olam 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 Va'ed, Baruch Ata Adonai Et Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim, Benatan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Tircha Adonai Elohecha Bechol Maasei Odecha Be free, feet necha U be free, vehem techa U be free, admatcha litova ki. Yashu Adonai Lasu Salecha Litov Kaasher Sas Al Avotecha Ki Tishma Bekol Adonai Elohecha Lishmor Mitzvotav Bechukotav Haktuva Basafer Hatora Haze Ki Tashu El Adonai Lohecha Beho Levabha Uvho Nafsecha Ki Hamitva Hazot Asher Anochi Mitzavha Hayom Lo niflet hi mimcha, velo rechoka hi. Lo vashamayim hi, lemor. Mi ya alelanu, hashamayma, feikahe halanu, feyashmienu ota, vena asena. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emed, Vechaye Olam Nata Bitochenu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Noten HaTorah. For our sixth Aliyah, we call upon Naomi Brown as our Torah reader. Torah reader. Rita. Yeah. Torah reader. Right, Rita? And for the blessed before and after the Torah, we call upon her beloved parents, Shannon and Dana. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bakar Banu Miko HaAmim, Venatan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai, Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. 
Velo me'ever layam hin le'mor Mi ya'avur lanu el ever hayam Ve'ikaheha lanu ve'yashmienu ota v'na'asena Kikarov elecha hadavar me'od Beficha uviovavcha la'asoto Re'ena tati lefanecha hayom et hachayim ve'et hatov Ve'et hamavet ve'et hara asher anohi metzavcha Hayom lishmor et Adonai Eloheinu lalechet bidrachav velishmor mitzvotav vehukotav umishpatav vehayita veravita uverachecha Adonai Elohecha Ba'aretz asher atav ashama lerisha Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Bechaye Olam Nata Betoheinu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen And for seventh Aliyah we call upon Shannon Brown and for the blessings before and after, we call upon his devoted wife, Dana Brody Brown, and devoted daughter, Naomi Brown. Barhu et Adonai Hamborak, Baruch Adonai Hamborak Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Adonai Hamborak Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bakar Banu Mikol Ha'amin, Venatan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Ve'im yifne levavcha velo tishma. Venirachta Veishtachavita Lelohim Acherim Vaavatam Higareti Lachem Hayom Ki Avod Tovedun Lota Arihun Yamim Al ha'adama asher ata over et hayadein lavo shama levishta ha'idoti vachem hayom et hashamayim vet ha'aret. Hachayim vehamavet natati lefanecha habracha vehaklala uvechata machayim lemaanti ye atavezarecha leahava et adonai elohecha Lishmoa bekolo udov kavo ki hu hayecha veorech yamecha la shevet al hadama asher nishba adonai la avotecha. Le Abraham, le Yitzhak, u Yaakov, le Tetz lachem. Baruch Atah Adonai, 
Kata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Halam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet, Vechaye Olam Nata Betoheinu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaTorah. We continue with Hagba and Galila for lifting and dressing the Torah. We call upon the one and only Ted Edmondson and Bob Levy. Please rise if you're able. About every one of my B'nai Mitzvah students at some point during their studies asks me the same question. So what exactly is Haftarah anyway? Sometimes they'll even add, is it like half a Torah? <laughs> if any of you are wondering the same thing, no, it's not half of a Torah. The Hebrew is actually spelled using different lettering than the word Torah. The words themselves are not related. My answer is usually, it's kind of like Torah the sequel. The first of the books of prophets, Joshua, picks up where the Torah leaves off, Moses passing away and handing on the torch to Joshua. But the tradition of reading Haftarah is less like Torah the sequel and more like Torah's replacement. In a time when Jews were forbidden to read and study the Torah, they instead chose other texts from our prophets and writings that had comparable narratives or themes with that week's parsha. Hence, although they were studying a text not from the Torah, they were still able to glean the lessons of the Torah. So why was this Haftarah portion, which you can find on page 277, by the way, why was it chosen for Yom Kippur? Well, it talks about fasting, so that makes sense. But I believe the overall goal of Isaiah's words here is to remind the people that true teshuvah is what God requires on Yom Kippur. That your fast should not be meaningless, that you don't become complacent when performing the rituals and reciting the prayers. But that makes sense for all of us. Of course we shouldn't become complacent when praying and performing rituals. Otherwise, what's the point? Although, I know we all need reminders from time to time. With Isaiah's words, God asks the people, is this the fast I desire? Is it worthy of the favor of Adonai? In verse seven, which you can see on the bottom of page 277, 
the question is raised, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to take the homeless poor into your home and never to neglect your own flesh and blood? In the middle of page 276, there is a commentary on this Haftarah portion that interprets this verse saying, the Torah envisions a community that is based on a sense of social solidarity and common humanity. And at the end of that commentary, for the prophet, we are all one family, united in our humanity, and without one another, our community is not whole. Lately, I've felt a lot of pressure from society, my peers, and plenty of others to feel a certain way or maintain a strong opinion or conviction on issues that have come up in recent events. But I want to make sure that I remind myself, and maybe you too, that it's okay to be in the process of finding your own opinion, or if your convictions aren't so strong. And it's okay to change your opinions from time to time, especially while pursuing knowledge on the subject. Furthermore, as Reformed Jews, we are not united politically, and that's nothing to be ashamed of, nor should it be worrisome. In fact, it is what should make us the kind of religious organization with lots of strength and longevity. This Haftarah portion is compelling us to keep our core basic Jewish values in sight as we move through life, particularly in our interactions with each other. For not only is every individual created B'Tselem Elohim in the image of God, but they are also your own flesh and blood, as we are all human beings part of a common humanity. My husband and I often discuss how we think the recent Avengers films have been better movies than the recent Justice League film <laughs> because the villain in the Avengers films is not a flat character. He's dynamic and not just plain evil. Please feel free to educate me later on the Justice League if there's something I'm missing, by the way. I love Wonder Woman. Okay. But my point is that I can't get on board with saying that someone's opinion is straight up wrong or evil. Even if we can't possibly see agreeing with an individual, hopefully we've given ourselves the opportunity to understand how they might come to a conclusion given their experiences and perspective. In our interactions with each other, the prophet Isaiah compels us to agree to disagree. Disagree with compassion, lead with empathy, listen while in discussion with another instead of forming your next thought. I believe that this Haftarah portion is specifically designated for this Yom Kippur morning as a reminder for us to break the monotony that can often take over our interactions with each other and the complacency that goes along with it. To make a conscious effort to maintain that kesher, that true connection, bein adam lechavero, between one human being and another. Only then can we be the community, the family we were meant to be. It's my honor to invite Rachel Levy to chant the Haftarah portion for us, as well as the Haftarah blessings. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Bin Vim Tovim Veratzav Edivrehem Haneemarim Be'emet Baruch Atah Adonai Habacher Batorah Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Yisrael Amo Uv Inviye Ha'emet Vatzedek Kera Vegaron Al Tachsoch Kashofar Harem Kolecha 
Vehagel ami pisham ulvet Yaakov hatortam beoti yom yom idroshun vedat derachai yechvatzun kegoy asher zeraka asa umishpat elohav. Shaluni, Mishpat et Sedek, Kirvat Elohim, Yechpatsun, La Amazanu, Velo Raita, Ininu Nafshenu, Velo Teda, Ein Beyom Zomechem, Timze Uchefet, Vechalat Vechem, Tingo soon. Ein le rivu matza tatsumu ule hakot be egrov resha lo tatsumu chayom le hashmia ba marom kolechem hazehiye so mechareu yom anot adam nafsho. Alechov ke agmo rosho vesak va efer yatzia alezet higratzom veyom ratzon ladunai halo zezom evhare u patecha hartu bot resha. Ater agudot mota veshalach retzutzim hafshim vechal mota tenateku halo paros laraev lachmecha veanim merudim tavi vayit. Kiti re arom vehisito umib sarecha no titalam azibaka kashechar orecha ve aruchatecha mehera tismach ve halach lefanecha sidkecha kevod adonai yasefecha. As tikra ve Adonai ya'ane Teshava vayomar Hineni Im tasir mitochecha mota Shelach etzba Vedaber aven Vetafeg laraev nafshecha Venefesh naena Tishpia Vetzarach bachoshech Orecha, va'afelatecha, katzoraim. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Sur kohol amim, sadik v'chol hadorot. Ha'el ha'neeman, ve'oseh hamdaber, umkayem. Shekol devara emet vatzedek al ha-Torah ve'al ha-Avodah ve'al ha-Nevi'im ve'al yom ha-Kiborim ha-Zeh shenatata lanu Adonai Eloheinu limchila v'lislecha ul ha-Para lechavod Ulti farets al hakol Adonai Eloheinu anachnu modim lach umvarchim otach it barkshim ha befi kol haytami leyolam vaed udevarcha emet vekayam laad baruch ata Adonai melech mochel 
soleach la anotenu, ve la anota mo ben Israel, uma avir ashmotenu, ve chal shana ve shana, melechal lo kol haaretz, mekadesh Israel ve yom hakiporim. Please turn to page 284 for responsive reading. This is a prayer for our congregation. Eternal, Eternal Presence, who blessed our mothers and fathers, bless this holy congregation, a house of study, prayer, and righteous deeds. Together we give thanks for our leaders who learn, teach, and uphold the Torah inspiring others to learn, teach, and uphold the Torah. Those who do the sacred work of building our community, may their service bring them joy, fulfillment, and purpose, and may they go from strength to strength. For our members, diverse in age, interest, and background, Jews by birth, Jews by choice, and those of other faiths who join with us, all who offer their time and talent, their love and commitment. For all who come here on this holy day of Yom Kippur to share the search for meaning and renewal, your presence is a blessing, your friendship a gift. May the spirit of peace, dignity, and respect live within these walls, inspiring us to care for one another with compassion and may we be a source of goodness, light, and healing for the world. May the one who blessed the generations before us bless us as we stand together this day. One congregation joined with all Jewish communities of the world through our prayers on this Day of Atonement. Let us renew ourselves for the year ahead. Let us honor the precious legacy that is ours. Amen. Please continue on page 285. For all who teach Torah and their students. May heaven grant redemption and grace, kindness and compassion, length of days and ample sustenance divine support, bodily health, and spiritual enlightenment, an offspring who will live and endure and never abandon the study of Torah. To our teachers and rabbis of holy communities in the land of Israel and in the diaspora, to our religious and communal leaders, spiritual mentors, and guides, to all their students and students of their students, to all who engage in the study of Torah. May the Sovereign of the Universe bless them all, prolonging their lives with fulfillment of days and lengths of years. May they be delivered from all trouble and saved from serious illness. May our Heavenly Teacher be their help on every occasion and at all times. And let us say, Amen. Page 286, prayer for our country. God of holiness, we hear your message. Justice, justice you shall pursue. God of freedom, we hear your charge. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. Inspire us through your teachings and commandments to love and uphold our precious democracy. Let every citizen take responsibility for the rights and freedoms we cherish. 
Let each of us be an advocate for justice, an advocate for liberty, a defender of dignity, and let us champion the values that make our nation a haven for the persecuted, a beacon of hope among the nations. May our actions reflect compassion for all people within our borders and abroad. May our leaders and officials embody the vision of our founders to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. We pray for courage and conscience as we aim to support our country's highest values and aspirations, the hard-won rights that define us as a people, the responsibilities that they entail. We pray for all who serve our country with selfish devotion, in peace and in war, from fields of battle to clinics and classrooms, from government to the grassroots, all those whose noble deeds and sacrifice benefit our nation and the world. We are grateful for the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that our founders ascribe to you, our Creator. We pray for their wisdom and moral strength, that we may be guardians of those rights for ourselves and for the sake of all people, now and forever. Page 288, Prayer for the State of Israel. Avinu, you who are high above all nations, states, and peoples, Rock of Israel, the one who has saved us and preserved us in life, bless the State of Israel, first flowering of our redemption. Be her loving shield, a shelter of lasting peace. Guide her leaders and advisors by your light of truth. Instruct them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who build and protect our holy land. Deliver them from danger. Crown their efforts with success. Grant peace to the land, lasting joy to all of her people. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Page 290. I invite you to please rise. I'll praise God's name, for God's name alone is truly sublime. A precious teaching I have given you, my Torah, do not forsake it. A tree of life to those who hold it fast, all who embrace it know happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Take us back, Adonai, let us come back to you. Renew in our time the days of old. It's
My friends, Zionism is not a dirty word or even a divisive idea. And yet the word Zionism has become a trigger and loaded word for so many anti-Semites and for those who want to demonize Israel and Jews. But I wonder how many people really understand what Zionism is. Zionism comes out of a belief that we as Jews have a right to have a homeland for our survival as a people. Well, that's it. That's, that's basically it. Theodor Herzl is the father of modern political Zionism. He launched the movement at the first Zionist Congress in 1897 in Basel. That day he began his lengthy address to the delegates by saying, quote, we are here to lay the foundation stone of the house which is to shelter the Jewish nation, unquote. The idea of creating a Jewish state, which Israel has always been, was the transformation of 2,000 years of Jewish yearning into a modern political movement as the result of worsening conditions for Jews in Europe. The goal had never been to create yet one more European-like nation-state, this time in the Middle East. No, the goal was then, as it has always remained, creating a state that would ensure the survival and enable the flourishing of the Jewish people. Even the British, who first supported the notion in the 1917 Balfour Declaration, but who then became unbendingly hostile to the Jews in Palestine, so that Jews had to wrestle land from them, understood that what they endorsed would be, would be nothing like other countries around the world. Quote, His Majesty's government view with favor, the Balfour Declaration stated, the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. The goal could not have been stated any more clearly, even by Israel's founders. Israel's Declaration of Independence made precisely the same point. The land of Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people, it begins, stating quite clearly for whom the state was being created. As Danny Gordas points out, that language was a far cry from when in the course of human events. There was nothing Jeffersonian about the country that Israel's founders were seeking to create. It was a democracy from the very beginning, surprising in some ways since there were no other democracies in the region and because most of the people who founded the state had come from countries where there was no democratic tradition. But never an, an ethnicity blind, religiously neutral, liberal democracy. Israel was always intended to be an ethnic democracy, meaning that one people would be at the center of the country's commitments, while the civic and religious rights of minorities would also be guaranteed. Like every modern state, Israel has too often observed these obligations in the breach. But the theory was clear from the outset. Israel would be a democracy, but not an ethnically, ethnically neutral one. Zionism is only about the creation of a safe place for Jews. It never, never, ever makes the claim that no one else is allowed in the Jewish homeland or that Muslims are bad or any other mishigas like that. Zionism is a dream for us Jews. It was a belief to help our ancestors cope with the prejudice and hatred they had to endure. Zionism is a peaceful concept that is loving at its core but it has been tremendously misused. Our movement of Judaism is Zionistic. ARTSA, the Association of Reformed Zionists, is an organization that is part of our reform movement and it advocates for those values that we hold dear in our hearts. As a Zionist who loves Israel, who just led two trips to Israel this past summer, I understand that there are many nuances to Israel. Like I said last night, we have to be able to criticize Israel without demonizing. The old days of nuanced discussion have taken a beating, but we know better. We know as Reformed Jewish Zionists who love Israel that we can criticize Israel and simultaneously love Israel. For we want Israel to be the best it can be. We want it to be a light unto the nations. And even if Israel is always under a microscope and is held to a higher standard than anyone else, I accept the challenge. I want my Israel to be a light unto the nations. I want Israel to stand up for the highest ideals and to be a true democracy in the Middle East. And so, 
We can criticize Israel's government because we love Israel and we want to see an Israel that we can be proud of. Like our own country, I dislike the government of Israel most of the time currently. I would like to see a new government that will promote equality for all people, peace with the Palestinians through the creation of a Palestinian state, women's rights, and equality for all Jews, be they traditional or progressive. I could say the same thing about the United States. As I said, I led two trips in Israel this summer. For the first time, I led a returner's trip. The goal was to take a deeper look at Israel and to hear different stories from different people. There were many stories for us to hear, but there's one I wish to share with you today. While we were in the West Bank, we visited an organization called Roots, in Hebrew, Shoreshim. It also has an Arabic name. Roots is a grassroots movement of understanding, nonviolence, and transformation among Israelis and Palestinians. It is a unique network of local Palestinians and Israelis who have come as the web states to see each other as partners. We need to make changes to end our conflict. Based on a mutual recognition of each people's connection to the land, we are developing understanding and solidarity despite our ideological differences. Roots is a place where local people can take responsibility and their work is aimed at challenging the assumptions both communities hold about each other, building trust and creating a new discourse around the conflict in their respective societies. The reality is that Israelis and Palestinians in the West Bank exist in almost complete separation and both sides have little knowledge of each other's lives or humanity. Stereotypes are generally just reinforced by exposure to the aggression of the other, whether through media or personal experience of violence and trauma. The goal of Roots is that through their projects and workshops, they are creating trust and partnership, which are the societal foundations upon which future political agreements can be built. By encouraging direct contact and deep communication between local communities, Roots have seen transformation. Stereotypes are replaced by an understanding of the other's humanity, suffering, and needs. This greatly reduces fear and creates appreciation and support for each other. This groundwork of trust, safety, and understanding is the foundation of any political solution. And the transformation undergone by those who have engaged with Roots has led them from apathy and frustration to responsibility and involvement. Specifically, Roots runs dialogue groups at least once a week between members of local communities. They know that there is great disagreement over many issues, over the facts of the past and the reality of the present. But they have found that effective dialogue is the secure place for argument and leads to deeper understanding. It is in this space that solutions can be developed. For any of us who have experienced leadership groups like ALF, we know that dialogue is the first step in achieving any goal. Roots also is involved with projects that include a wide range of formal and informal activities and actions, from inter-religious discussion groups to a summer camp for children to community-wide meals. And the third prong of their work was what our group experienced, which was bringing their experience and personal stories to new groups. They speak with various groups at the Roots Field in the West Bank where we met them and internationally with the aim to open and change the conversation around the conflict. I think for the entire group and myself, we left our visit with Roots with a great sense of hope and inspiration for our future. I would love to start a Friends of Roots organization here at Temple Emmanuel. Let me know if you want to get involved. This is just one such program that Israel is part of. So when I hear Israel's doing X and Y from our media, it makes me mashugi because the media portrays in Israel in such a black and white way that there's no room for a broader or more honest view of Israel. The interesting thing to note is that the Roots organization and many other similar organizations like the Jewish Christian Dialogue Group in Jerusalem or the interfaith work that is going on in Israel all comes out of a Zionistic mentality. You see, my friends, unlike the government of Israel, the majority of Israelis believe that peace with the Palestinians is not only attainable, but necessary to create the kind of country that they believe Israel should be. And so, when we see the policies of the current government in Israel, like the nation's state law, 
we need to also glance at the Israelis themselves. That is why seeing 100,000 Israelis protest the nation-state law was remarkable. 20,000 were, were protesting for gay and lesbian rights, and another, another 100,000 for another similar issue. I believe that this government of Israel and what it stands for needs to be opposed. So long as the laws like the nation state remain the unaltered law of the land, Israel's leaders must be challenged until there is an end to those who are denied their most basic human rights by the law. So too we must stand up for an Israel that will be at peace with its Palestinian neighbors. There has to be an end to this current situation. It is wrong for Israelis, it is wrong for Palestinians, and it's creating havoc here in America for us American Jews. Enough is enough. To support Israel is to stand up to its government's misbehavior and to remind them that we expect Israel to be the light unto the nations. In 2016, when I was at a Central Conference of American Rabbis convention in Israel, we focused on women's equality and the creation of the egalitarian prayer space at the Western Wall. We pressured the government and Netanyahu agreed with a location at the Western Wall for both men and women to pray. And then a couple months later, he backed out of his agreement, which is not uncommon. The Supreme Court even told him he had to make good on his deal. I was there in 2016 when 400 plus reform rabbis met at the Knesset with over 40 members of the Knesset who agreed with our vision of equality. Netanyahu said all the right things with his great oration abilities, and then a couple months later did not do what he promised. He has yet to demonstrate any concern over his legacy or demonstration of being a true leader. He was on some level a disciple of Ariel Sharon, who was a notorious hawkish leader and who even advocated for the transfer of Palestinians out of Israel. And what happened to Sharon when he became prime minister last? He saw the opportunity to lead and he moved his positions from hawk to dove. He became an advocate for peace with the Palestinians. He got it. Bibi has yet to get it. So we need to be honest with ourselves. If we have the perspective that we cannot criticize Israel, then we are unable to have true dialogue. To love Israel is to encourage Israel to live in peace with its neighbors. That does not mean we do not fight for our borders or defend ourselves. That is not a question. Israel must exist. That is not negotiable. And do not think for a moment that I am saying that Hamas has no part in this. They most certainly do. I, for one, want them out of the picture completely. For they have contributed more to the ill treatment of the Palestinians than anyone else. They use the Palestinians as pawns in a game, but they care nothing for them. In the end, don't we want an Israel that we can be proud of? An Israel that is a light unto the nations. An Israel that stands up for what is right and decent and Israel that partners with peaceful Palestinians. I wish I could take you all with me to Israel, because when you are there, it's much easier to understand the situations. The media and press in our country distort the facts and makes things out to be black and white. You're either for Israel or for the Palestinians. No thank you. I chose as a Zionist to support an Israel that stands up to the best version of itself and sees a sister, a brother, in the Palestinians. Like I said on Rosh Hashanah Day, Isaac and Ishmael, as the sons of Abraham, are siblings. There's clear evidence that they loved and cared for each other. That is the relationship I believe we must have. On our two trips this summer, we had Palestinian bus drivers. And when I learned of each of their stories, it affirmed for me again the reality that the majority of Palestinians, like the majority of Israelis, just want peace. In fact, both bus drivers lived in Jerusalem, and one was fifth generation there. He loves living in Israel. He votes. He has five children who are all thriving, and he showed me pictures of his beautiful family. He even invited me to his home the next time I'm in Israel. We felt a kesher, a connection with each other, and that feeling is not uncommon. That is the reality, my friends. Just like when I lived in Israel in 1988 to 1989, I had Israeli and Palestinian friends. And you know what? Once you meet someone and share your story, and they share theirs, you realize you have more in common than not. 
you begin to see that you could have a friendship with this person. You understand that, that at the core of each of us is a human being who just wants to live their life in peace. So if you like, probably in the spring of 2020, I'm going back, lead another interfaith trip where we will go into the West Bank and we will hear other stories and we'll learn as we dive deeper into the real issues. As an example today, after the short sermon discussion, our tikkun alum session will in part be a discussion on Israel. It is time for us to openly communicate about Israel and to listen to other points of view. The great Rabbi Hillel reminds us that if I'm not for myself, who is for me? And being for my own self, what am I? And if not now, when? Now is the time for us to get involved. Now is not the time to kvetch about anti-Semitism and how misunderstood Israel is. Now is the time for action. And the more of us that get involved, the greater the impact we can have. Let's do this. Let's do this together. Amen. Continue on page 293. We join together. Because I was angry, because I didn't think, because I was exhausted and on edge, because I'd been drinking, because I can be mean, because I was reckless and selfish, because I was worried about money, because my marriage was dead, because other people were doing it, because I thought I could get away with it, because... I did something wrong because I'm in pain, because I wish I could do it, because I hurt him, because I lost her trust, because I let them down, because I was self-destructive, because I was foolish, because I'm ashamed, because that's not who I am, because that's not who I want to be, because I want to be forgiven. God, bring down my walls of defensiveness and self-righteousness. Help me to stay in humility. Please give me the strength to do what's right. Page 299, we continue together. For the sin we committed against you through evading and avoiding because we could not face the truth. For our flight into hypocrisy and deception because we did not dare to speak it. For the facts we dissembled and we all glossed over for the excuses we made, for feeding our bodies and starving our souls, for interfering with the souls of others and neglecting their needs, for shifting our responsibilities, 
for reproaches and recriminations, for our foolishness, our folly, and false standards, for seeing these things only in others, never in ourselves, for our complacency which blinds us and our self-righteousness which lessens us, for calculating kindness and measuring out pity, for charity that is cold and prayers without feeling, for withholding our love, for the appeals that we ignored and the people whom we refused, for the affection which died and our lives that became bitter, for the visions which faded, the ideals we neglected, and the opportunities we lost, for the fear of change and renewal and our unbelief, for saying prayers aloud but refusing to listen, for being our own worst enemy. We continue silently on page 301 with our personal confession. We continue on page 311. We join together. We confess our sins against the earth. We commit ourselves to saving it. We have assaulted our planet in countless ways. We have blamed others for the spiraling, deepening crisis. We have consumed thoughtlessly and irresponsibly. We have driven myriad species to the point of extinction. We have exhausted irreplaceable resources. We have failed to transcend borders and act unselfishly. We have given in to our many appetites and our gluttony. We have harmed beyond repair the habitats of living beings. We have ignored the signs of change in our climate and our seasons. We have jeopardized the well-being of future generations. We have known the problem but left problem solving to others. We have lost sight of our role as God's partners in creation. We have mocked cynically those who love creatures great and small. We have neglected the environment, most of all, in places of poverty. We have overpopulated our cities and overfished our oceans. We have polluted seashore and sky, fertile soil and freshwater springs. We have questioned and doubted solid evidence of danger. We have ravaged the old growth forests, ecosystems created over centuries. We have spewed poison into the bloodstream of our land, its rivers, lakes, and trees. We have transformed industrial ugliness. We have used shared resources for personal gain and corporate profit. We have violated the commandment, do not destroy. We have wasted precious treasures, our God-given gifts. We have exploited the weakest and most vulnerable in our midst. And yet we yearn to be better guardians of this earth and the fullness thereof. Let us be zealous now to care for this unique corner of the cosmos, this planet, our sacred home. We continue with our Cheshbon HaNefesh silently.
page 316. Lashana Tova. My name is Dana Brody Brown, and I'm honored to be here representing Temple Emanuel's Board of Trustees this morning. It's a pleasure to see all of you here. 
and those of you who are live streaming our service and to be sharing this Yom Kippur observance with you as one congregational family. A warm welcome to our members. It's so wonderful to see all of you. Please take a moment to say hello to many new friends that are joining us today and for the first time here at High Holy Day Services. To those that are new to our congregation, please stop by our Shalom table on the right of the exit doors where we have flyers and information on our, all our upcoming temple programs and activities, including Sukkot. There will be membership and temple representatives in the lobby if you have questions. Rabbi's sermon discussion will take place immediately after the service. Please review the poster in the lobby for times and locations for all the services and events taking place today. The High Holy Days continue after Yom Kippur with an array of Sukkot events. On Arab Sukkot on Sunday, September 23rd, we will have dinner and decorate the sukkah. Please bring your own dinner and a dessert to share. The evening will culminate with a Sukkot experience led by Rabbi Magat and Cantor Edmondson. For those of you in your 20s and 30s, join us on Tuesday, September 25th at 6 p.m. for Sushi and the Sukkah, a fun evening of free sushi and schmoozing with Cantor Edmondson. RSP, RSVP on Facebook by September 21st. On Wednesday evening, September 26th, we have scotch in the sukkah, including scotch tasting and a kosher meat dinner. And on Thursday evening, September 27th at 6 p.m., join Rabbi Magat and Cantor Edmondson for sangria in the sukkah. Of course, non-alcoholic alternatives will also be available. RSVP online, please. The senior youth group grades eight through 12 will be having a sleepover in the sukkah at Temple Emmanuel on Saturday, September 29th, starting 6 p.m. Bring your sleeping bag and enjoy the festival of Sukkot with your friends. RSVP to easy. Erev Simhat Torah is on Sunday, September 30th. There will be a pizza dinner for all at 5 p.m., followed by Simhat Torah service and a fun evening including Israeli dancing, unrolling the Torah around the sanctuary, and the consecration of new students in our religious school. Everyone is invited for this wonderful evening as we conclude the High Holy Days. The final service of the High Holy Day season will be the Simhat Torah morning and Yisker service at 9 a.m. on Monday, October 1st in the chapel. Save the date for Shabbat in Nature at Uvas Canyon Park on November 3rd. The day will include a Shabbat morning service, a potluck lunch, discussion, music, and group or individual hiking. No need to RSVP for this event, just come. During the High Holy Days, we collect non-perishable packaged food for the needy in our community. Please deposit your food donations in one of our collection barrels located in the lobby here, or at Temple Emmanuel through Simhat Torah. I hope you are staying for the Nila service this afternoon at 5 p.m. We encourage you to bring your shofar so that we can surround the sanctuary with a communal blast. And last, but definitely not least, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to thank all of you who have already donated to the Temple's annual campaign. We are so grateful for the generous support we receive each year from you, our fellow congregants. If you had not had a chance to make a donation yet, Please note the campaign pledge cards are provided for you in your handouts, and you can drop them in one of the two drop boxes in the lobby of the theater. All donation amounts are deeply appreciated. I want to take this opportunity to wish you and your families a very happy new year, one filled with good health and peace. May you have an easy fast and gamar hatima tova. Only two pages, huh? You know, I, I think we left out our thanks, interfaith Thanksgiving service in Hanukkah, didn't we? Yeah, we should have added that. Sorry about that. We'll get that next year. And probably more food items would be nice for us to hear, too. Well, here's the rule. If you are eating, don't enjoy it. <laughs> but if you need to eat, eat. It's not healthy. And all of you should be drinking water. So please drink water. Even those of you that are fasting should drink the water. And uh, I have nothing more to say about you, Ken, or anything. I think we're done. So we'll be back uh, in a moment. For those of you that want in on this discussion, this is your opportunity to say what you think. 
so we'll have the sermon discussion. We'll start in about two minutes. I'm just going to get out of my robe and uh, refresh myself. <laughs>